皆様大変長らくお待ちいたしました We appreciate you waiting Thank you very much Today for joining the Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors Conference or Visionet We will now begin the fourth Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors Conference I am Karutida Tada. I'll be your MC today. I would like to begin the conference with an announcement. This program will be also streamed with English audio. For details, check the official website's page about viewing or the YouTube description. Also, we ask that you do not record sound or video of this program, take photos, take screenshots of the presentation materials or the like. Visionet creates opportunities for women chiefs to share their action to empower women in their local governments. To engage with women ambassadors to Japan and women at the forefront of Japan's economy as business leaders, as well as to exchange ideas and information on creating sustainable society and stimulating local economies from women's perspectives. By shaping a common understanding of women's empowerment and further building momentum for that empowerment in different parts of society, Visionet aims to create future and society where women shine. We have a very program under this year's theme of women's empowerment. As we did last year, the local government joining Visionet have brought their local specialities for Visionet Online Market. That runs until February 28, 2023. The local specialities from the towns of Japanese women trips are available for purchase with free shipping. So, do not miss this opportunity. So, let's begin by introducing our attendees. Chiefs, when your name is called, please stand up and bow. Yuriko Koike, Governor of Tokyo. Yuriko Yamazaki, Mayor of Sotogama Hamamachi, Higashi Sugarugun, Aomori, Mariko Ando, Mayor of Suchirura Si, Ibaraki. Mitsuko Shibasaki, Mayor of Wakoshi, Saitama. Kyoko Yamaguchi, Mayor of Hashida Shi, Saitama. Kazumi Ota, Mayor of Kashiwa Shi, Chiba. Yoko Kobayashi, Mayor of Kodaira Shi, Tokyo. Misako Tamura, Mayor of Hinode Machi, Nishitamagun, Tokyo. Mito Sato, Mayor of Zamashi, Kanagawa. Tomoko Takizawa, Mayor of Ikedashi, Osaka. Mariko, Fukumoto, Mayor of Koto Uracho, Tohakugun, Toktori. Sabako Naito, Mayor of Tokushima Shi, Tokushima. Next, let's introduce our chiefs who are joining us today on online basis. 
Chiefs, when your name is called, please stand up and bow. Hokkaido Abutagun, Rusutsumura, Miss Hisako Sato. Miss Okawa Hideko from Tochigi Shi, Tochigi Gun. Tochigi Natsukawa Shi, Toriyama Shi, Junko. Kawamata, Tochigi, Nogimachi, Shimo Tamagun, Hirose, Mase, Meya, Chiba, Katsura Shi, Yumiko, Takakawa, Meya, Chiba, Takomachi, Katori Gun, Tomiko, Hirayama, Meya, Nagano Suashi, Yukari Kaneko, Meya, Shizuoka Prefecture, Shimada Shi, Kinuyo Somea, Mayor Wakayama, Mihamacho, Hidaka Gun, Miwako, Yabuchi, Mayor Coach Prefecture, Inocho Agawa Gun, Makiko Ikeda, Mayor Thank you very much for being here today. Sadoko Kishimoto, Mayor of Suginamiku, Tokyo, is delayed due to her official duties. Now, there are some chiefs who are not able to join us today because of their official duties, and I would like to introduce them. And you can watch messages of support from the absent chiefs on the official website. We will now proceed to the opening remarks. Our first remark will be delivered by Joint Chair of Visionet and Governor of Tokyo, Yuriko Koike. We are ready for you to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Yuriko Koike, Governor of Tokyo. So the Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors Conference, this is the fourth time. And every year, I'm very much looking forward to participate in this conference. I really would like to thank all the uh, uh, female governors and mayors and ambassadors and business executives. Thank you very much. Participating female mayors and governors, ambassadors, and business um, ex executives, and everyone watching online for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you very much for your participation. Now, this is the first time in three years that uh, I can see you in person. So uh, I feel so great that the, um, I'm connected to the people here in this room and also coming in online and uh, people who are here in person. Uh, I'm so happy to have you all here in this room. Well, the world is currently facing many, many crises uh, such as unstable international situation, energy crisis, climate crisis, and a pandemic. We are facing so many different crises, and also the industry itself is going through drastic changes. And uh, uh, there are many structural challenges, and we have to solve these structural challenges and overcome adversity. And I think that is the woman's power. Every year, the uh, number of the uh, female heads of the government is increasing. Last year, uh, 41, and uh, this year, uh, we have 45 head of the uh, uh, municipalities and also governments this year. Well, meanwhile, there are approximately 1,800 local governments in Japan, so that there is much more room to increase. We have to take it positively. 
As for the corporate sector, the percentage of a female president is about 15 percent, and also number of women participating in decision making uh, should be increasing in the future, and it will enhance the uh, uh, ability of the society. I'm sorry to say that the Japan's uh, rank uh, 116th in the gender gap index. If the current situation continues, then the Japan will be left behind. Overseas, uh, there are many elections, but uh, recently we had the uh, midterm gubernatorial um, election in the U.S., and uh, many women were selected, and the media is also giving attention. So uh, as number of governors, the, uh, the 36 states had the election, and uh, one-third, uh, the 12 women were elected. So that uh, the percentage of female governors uh, in the all 50 states is now 24 percent. And also uh, the ambassador of Mexico and the other female ambassadors are here uh, in this room. And, and I'm so grateful that you are taking so much initiative. And the uh, number of the uh, female ambassador has uh, also increased up to 19 uh, ambassadors. Now, um, talking about the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, the, uh, uh, we have introduced um, a quota system uh, as the uh, Metropolitan Ordinance. And uh, to ensure that at least 40% of the members of councils are either male or female, otherwise it won't be a real uh, meetings. And the goal of increasing the number of female committee members to 40% or more by the end of uh, 2022, but it was actually achieved already ahead of the schedule so that uh, we would like to further promote the advancement of women in Japan by incorporating more diverse opinions and viewpoints. So uh, women ambassadors and um, business leaders, uh, please share your experience and thoughts with us. And uh, we can exchange our experience and cases and then share some challenges and then issues so that we can overcome anything. And uh, this is also um, Marche, uh, Maru, right nearby in the uh, buildings that uh, they are selling the uh, product from these uh, municipalities. And uh, they are also selling it through online. And all these produce and, and products are the uh, proud products of their municipalities. I am going to visit them, and I'm going to order something online so that um, now the era, we are going through dramatic changes, and that's why we really have to help each other, and also uh, we have to be hand in hand to work together. Hope to hear from you a lot. So, and also the uh, uh, Mr. Kobayashi uh, of the uh, Japan Chamber of Commerce also uh, give the. Uh, uh, Speakings and also uh, Mizu Mori uh, will be also uh, giving some uh, uh, greetings to us so that the government will be also hearing us. As for the uh, um, the governors, myself and also Yoshimura, Ms. Yoshimura will be giving us some greetings. I hope that uh, today's conference is going to be very fruitful. Let's make it so. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Governor Koike. Now, the co-chair of uh, Visionet, the uh, governor of Yamagata Prefecture, uh, Ms. Mieko Yoshimura. Unfortunately, she is not able to attend uh, this uh, meeting, so uh, let me read her uh, letter to this. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mieko Yoshimura, Governor of Yamagata Prefecture. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the people who have joined us today in support of Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors Conference.
Thanks to your support, this year's event marks the fourth anniversary of the first Bijonet held in 2019. Due to COVID, we had to hold the event online for last two years, but we are so happy to be able to hold this year's event as a hybrid of face-to-face -face and also online sessions. This is the first time in three years that we met in person, and uh, I wish I could have been there to meet you, but due to unavoidable circumstances, I am not able to attend. Attend. Well, the women who make up the half of the population must be able to fully demonstrate their abilities and then play an active role in order to realize sustainable and vibrant societies. However, while other countries are accelerating their efforts to achieve gender equality, Japan lags far behind other developed countries in this regard. In this context, as a leader of the Gender Equality PT of the National Governors Association of Japan, I have compiled four proposals on education, economy, politics, and health for realization of gender equality to be fourth front runner in the world on July 29th this year. In order to realize gender equality, we need to address the barriers such as the stereotyped gender roles that persist in our society. I have strongly urged the government to address this issue in the four areas of education, economy, politics, and health. Today, under the theme of a promotion of women's empowerment, we have scheduled lectures by female ambassadors to Japan, female executives from overseas, as well as breakout sessions, which I am sure will be helpful for your future efforts. I strongly hope that all of you attending today will use this conference as an opportunity to lead women's participation in society in your perspective fields and in positions. To Governor Koike of Tokyo and all the participants today, let us work together with hope and courage towards the realization of a society where all women can shine. In conclusion, I hope that today's conference will be fruitful and productive for all the participants. November the 20th, 2022, Mieko Yoshimura, Governor of Yamagata. And that was uh, from uh, Governor Yoshimura. Next. Ken Kobayashi, Chairman of the Japan Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Tokyo Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which organized this conference, will deliver his remarks. Mr. Kobayashi, please. Thank you for the introduction. I am Ken Kobayashi. On the first of this month, I became the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And uh, furthermore, on the 17th, I became uh, the chair of Japan Co Chamber of Commerce and Industry after becoming the chair of Tokyo Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So I am quite new. So uh, Governor Koike and uh, Governor uh, Yoshimura uh, have uh, helped uh, to realize uh, this uh, Vision Network Conference. I would like to convey my congratulations. So Vision Net, the name itself uh, is very astounding, and today I am the only male here today. 
And so uh, within uh, the politics, uh, the e economics, uh, and uh, also the ambassadors uh, to Japan, uh, there are many a uh, female uh, serving on these posts, uh, and they're all here today to exchange their views uh, and uh, cooperate uh, together. And this uh, indeed uh, will be conducive uh, to the advancement of uh, women. So. Tokyo Chamber of Commerce and Industry after Meiji period uh, in 1878, uh, it was established uh, to uh, do away uh, with uh, inequality. And uh, we uh, believed uh, that um, uh, this will uh, ignite uh, the prosperity. And Eiichi uh, Shibusawa uh, had uh, this uh, principle and this uh, had um, been the foundation uh, of Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and uh, with a prosperation of a company and uh, uh, Tokyo, uh, this uh, would uh, lead uh, to prosperity of Japan. Uh, and uh, now we have 515 uh, offices, uh, and the membership uh, is 12 1.23 uh, million. And so for the regional uh, chamber of commerce, uh, we are quite uh, active uh, at these uh, locations, uh, and uh, many of the members uh, are from SMEs. And the 70% of employment uh, comes from SMEs uh, in Japan. Uh, so this uh, nationwide uh, SMEs uh, are serving uh, the community uh, and working uh, with the local government uh, to exploit uh, the attractiveness uh, of uh, the region. And this will lead to generation of employment. Uh, and uh, of course, this will lead to the growth of uh, the local community. What's important uh, is the major uh, players in local community uh, will have to have an ownership uh, to generate uh, ideas. Uh, and. Uh, take advantage of the resources of the local community and uh, collaborate uh, with each other. So today, uh, we have uh, governors and mayors uh, from around the uh, country, and uh, we would like to together uh, work uh, to activate uh, uh, local communities. Uh, and uh, the environment surrounding SMEs, uh, as Governor Koike mentioned uh, earlier, uh, there are a lot of challenges, uh, namely COVID-19, as well as uh, invasion of uh, Ukraine by Russia, uh, and inflation and so forth. Uh, so it's really endless, and especially uh, the, the outlook is so opaque. And from COVID-19, uh, the economy is about uh, to recover, uh, but uh, SME uh, is uh, facing shortage of labor. Uh, so uh, with these uh, elements, uh, there's inflation and pressure on wages. Uh, so uh, companies uh, will have to um, empower uh, women. Uh, so that uh, the business will become diverse uh, and um, companies are required to increase employment uh, and grow. Uh, so according to the research done by a, uh, JCCI and TCCI, the directors, female directors, 40% uh, of the companies uh, do not have uh, any female directors or leaders uh, within those companies. Uh, so, which means that, that there are uh, so many uh, challenges and issues uh, to uh, see the advancement uh, of uh, women into society. But I'm not being so pessimistic uh, because uh, many of you here, uh, we see a, an increase uh, in uh, women leaders uh, and uh, with uh, their uh, social advancement, uh, there are a lot of uh, female uh, would-be leaders uh, who are uh, willing uh, to uh, become executives. Uh, and uh, also the 23 branches that we have, uh, we have 365 uh, female associates. Uh, and the ratio 
uh, has ex a female exceeded uh, 10 percent uh, uh, with the new members uh, joining us, uh, and uh, we hope to see an increase uh, going forward. Uh, we have Ichi Sesan uh, from the Chamber of Commerce today. A, and uh, in Tokyo, oh, in 1949, it was a very a early establishment, uh, and uh, it uh, has uh, contributed uh, to uh, the advancement uh, of women in the society. Uh, so at uh, Chamber of uh, Commerce, uh, we are uh, working uh, with the Women's uh, Leaders uh, Association. And through that, uh, we will uh, continue uh, to uh, extend uh, support. Finally, for all of you here today, I hope that this uh, vision net uh, work uh, will become uh, successful. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Kobayashi-san, thank you very much. So now uh, we will prepare for the messages of encouragement and the keynote addresses. And thank you to all the female governors and mayors uh, who came on to the stage. Uh, please step down. Thank you. Next to continue, we will hear a message of encouragement from Masako Mori, Special Advisor to the Japanese Prime Minister on Women's Empowerment. Due to her official duties today, she will be joining us online. So, Ms. Mori, please. Yes, uh, hello everyone. I am uh, Mori, Special Advisor to the Japanese Prime Minister on Women's uh, Empowerment. Uh, this is the fourth uh, Vision Network, uh, and I would like to make a, a few remarks. So we have uh, governors uh, and ambassadors uh, and executives uh, from uh, around Japan. And I understand that there are uh, many people gathering uh, at the venue. Uh, and uh, this is uh, because of uh, Governor uh, Koike and uh, everyone else uh, who have been contributing uh, to uh, this venue. And I became uh, the first uh, special advisor to the Prime Minister on Women's uh, Empowerment and as a cabinet, uh, the equality of uh, gender uh, and women's uh, empowerment uh, has become one of the uh, big uh, challenge uh, for uh, the government uh, and the government uh, is uh, willing to push ahead uh, with this. And uh, I am now in Okayama uh, because uh, we are holding uh, round uh, table uh, discussions uh, with uh, many uh, female executives, uh, mayors and governors uh, from around uh, Japan. The other day, uh, we welcomed um, leaders uh, to the official residence uh, of uh, Prime Minister and have been uh, holding discussion. So, uh, Mr. Kishida uh, is uh, really uh, driving uh, this uh, women's uh, empowerment uh, and uh, women's uh, independence. Economic uh, independence uh, has become uh, one of the main pillars uh, within uh, his uh, policy. And uh, under a new capitalism, um, we need to uh, help uh, the child-rearing uh, uh, women uh, so that uh, they uh, will also uh, be able to uh, be a part uh, of uh, the uh, business and society. So uh, for uh, this uh, policy to be executed, uh, I believe that uh, Vision Network and uh, what it is uh, doing is extremely important. And uh, on December 3rd, uh, we are holding uh, well, uh, 2022. And uh, the location will be Eichi Ishibusawa's uh, former house, uh, and uh, we will have um, 
president of uh, Iceland, uh, and uh, we will have uh, other uh, important uh, VIPs, uh, including uh, Nobel uh, laureates. And this will be hybrid for the first time, so we will be having uh, satellite uh, venues uh, and uh, as uh, well. Uh, so with uh, Kobayashi san from uh, JCCI and uh, also those of you here today, I hope that you will join us there. And for today's uh, Vision uh, Network, I understand that uh, there will be a very important topics uh, that will be discussed uh, throughout the breakout session as well. Uh, so I hope that uh, this uh, will uh, help uh, to uh, drive uh, women's uh, empowerment uh, even more. Mori-san, thank you very much. Next. We would like to invite uh, the video message of support from Francesca Gisri, the mayor of Berlin, Federal Republic of Germany. Female governors and mayors from all over Japan, female ambassadors in Japan, female executives. Hello from Berlin to the Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors Conference. Since 1994, Berlin and Tokyo have been linked by a city partnership that is inspirational for both cities. Tokyo and Berlin, as well as Japan and Germany, are strong partners with a shared set of values. It's very important to me that we continue to strengthen our dialogue and we can learn a lot from each other. And we can work together to find solutions to the pressing challenges of our time. If we are going to shape our future successfully, we need gender equality, as well as self-determination and support for women. In Berlin, we see this as a task we want to address in every area of policy making. Despite the progress that's been made, we still have a long way to go all over the world. We can currently see that, for instance, in the courageous protests in Iran. And we can see that in politics at home as well. I am the first woman to be elected governing mayor in Berlin in the almost 800 years of Berlin's history. Only one woman led the government before that. That was Luise Schröder, who took over as acting mayor of Berlin on 8th of May 1947, until the elected mayor, of course a man, could take office. As women who are heads of government, business people or ambassadors, we have a special responsibility to stand up for social progress, universal gender equality and women's empowerment. Supporting each other can be very helpful. And today's conference is making that kind of contribution. It's a good opportunity to exchange ideas and experience and make connections. And it shows that we can achieve more when we work together. I hope you will enjoy a successful conference that generates many new ideas that help to benefit women. Kind regards from Berlin. Francisca Giffey. That concludes a message of support from Francesca Giffey, Mayor of Belgium, Berlin, uh, Federal Republic of Germany. Everybody, now we'd like to invite Ms. Meriba Brier. Her, ex uh, Her Excellency, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenty Potentially of United Mexican States. Governor Conte, Governor Yoshimura, Mr. Kobayashi, thank you for hosting us, to the Japanese majors and to my colleague ambassadors. All of us participa participating in Vision Network 2022. I am Melba Priya. It is an honor to join you again this year. 
to show our support to an objective that is very important to us all. Yes, we insist. Power and empowerment is important. It is important to us, not just because of our gender, but because as persons who have been fortunate to occupy positions of power, we are able to see positive changes, positive results when it comes to empowerment. As agents of change, we are witness to the progress we have made and also to the enormous challenges we still face on the road to women's equality. We see firsthand that there is still much to be done to give women the place they deserve in any place. Women in power seek to be able to enact policies which are fair and beneficial to all members of our societies. However, to get to that point, to the bargaining table, first our voices have to be heard. Women in power look for change. They look to work for others, to have better services, to have better options. When at home, we tend to our families, and maybe sometime in the week, we think of ourselves. Many of us have partners. Many of us live alone. But both realities have price and rewards. Empowerment begins with representation, in, in particular with political representation. Through it, it's simple to say it may not be by any means simple to achieve. And I am sure governors and mayors have a lot of stories to share with us. We know that there are barriers that limit participation of women in political life, in business, in sports, in science, in arts, in education, and in most segments of society. Sometimes these barriers are written into laws, but often it is our own local custom practices and attitudes that really prevent women from achieving our true potential. We must change these dynamics. It is also true that women dare and flourish when given the chance. Though it's not easy, measures must be taken to ensure that women are given the rightful place in the political institution of our countries. Empowerment is representation, and representation is giving women the opportunity to participate in decision-making process anywhere and everywhere policy is made. Public policy is so important and has such a profound impact in our life that we can't live only, and we can't leave it only to men. We must ensure that women have a say so on how we decide to construct our societies and how to make societies work for us and for everyone on equal basis. In my country, in Mexico, we introduced a quota system at our federal Congress more than 25 years ago. In 1996, we established a 30% quota. Then we raised it to 40% and finally to 50. In 2014, today, and for the past six years, we have an evenly balanced federal Congress. The upper house and the lower house has 50% legislators as women and 50% legislators as men. We are also working so that this par parity can also be achieved at our prefectural assemblies. We have not reached there. One out of three mayors and one out of three governors are women, but we still have lots to do. 
Political equality guarantees that women have the same political representation when laws are being made. And this can lead to bold actions that promote more equality in fields which severely affect the lives of women. Laws relating to childcare, ret reproductive rights, education, access to loan, business opportunity, further enhance the status not only for women, but for all members of society. We must continue to safeguard these advances and we never go backwards in any of these issues. I am aware there are many challenges ahead and that there are challenges we still can't identify. The pandemic showed that crisis often impacts women more severely than it does men. More women lost their jobs than men. More women fell into poverty. M more women also took longer time to go back to their work and they had to take more domestic responsibilities. More women became victims of violence during the pandemic. Sadly, this also happens in the cases of situations of war. We must continue to work to guarantee the safety of women, their access to justice every time it is required. This is the utmost importance because violence is precisely the worst example of inequality and the expression of power to hurt others and that must be avoided and stopped always. We must do all of this to fulfill the essence of empowerment, to give everyone as many opportunities as possible at home and outside our homes. And we must give ourselves the possibility to decide what path, whichever path we want to pursue in business, in academics, in politics, in our families, we must continue to update non-written social norms relating to child rearing, to child care, to parental leave, who and how we take care of our elders and institutions such as marriage. Though they are enormous facing these challenges together, we are strong and we are encouraged. The Vision Network Declaration of Female Governors and Mayors shows us to face these fights. We take the lead in promoting women's participation in all areas of society, including politics and economics. We promote a change in society so that everyone, regardless of gender, can play an active role in revitalizing the regions. We utilize our know-how we have as female leaders to foster the next generation who will be the bearers of a brighter future. These goals must truly serve as inspiration to us all in our everyday lives. We must take this message to our heart and let them guide us and work as we seek the empowerment of women. To get there, we must encourage more women to take up leadership position in whatever field they may choose. Not only that we must train more women for those very position of leaderships, but we also have to train men and walk together as change happens. Mentoring is an important process of this effect. It is essential that we focus on providing girls with a sense of opportunity, confidence, and just as important responsibility. Young women, must also be given the tools to help them reach new levels and personal development and professional achievement. Not only is this essential in politics, but it is absolutely necessary in all walks of life. We have to teach young men that the presence of women in every field or activity is to be respected and promoted. We must share our experiences with the next generation. We know that in most countries, Women are, ma are a majority in the population. We also know that women have an active participation in all fields. And though women make up the higher percentage of workers in many of those fields, such as health and education, they are underrepresented in the decision-making process. The path towards empowerment is long and uphill. And we work towards achieving these goals. 
I am reminded of what Albert Einstein once said. He said, if you want to live happily, tie it to a goal, not to a person or things. So let us work towards achieving these goals and towards creating as much happiness and joy for as many people as possible. I look forward to hearing our interesting discussion on sustainability, regional revitalization, the SDGs, women in business shaping our future societies. And thank you, Vision Network, for allowing us to believe in ourselves. Mexican Ambassador, Meruba Priya, thank you very much. Everybody, thank you for waiting. So now we would like to begin the subcommittee and we would like to ask the Ms. Yuka Tanimoto, Editor-in-Chief for Forbes Japan Web, to be the moderator. And Her Excellency, Mrs. Roxanne Du Bruderling, is absent for this session. Thank you. So now we would like to begin the channel three of the summit committee. The topic is future strategy for the next generation led by women. My name is Yuka Tanimoto and I am the subcommittee facilitator from Forbes Japan. Well, recent years in economy, we see the social disparity and the political divides which are rising issues and these disparities and divides need to be corrected and we need to build the sustainable society that is a growing shared recognition in Japan and also elsewhere in the international community. And the female's capability of empathy and also sensitivity, creativity, and leveraging the communication skills are being forecast. So in this subcommittee, I would like to ask for your views on the future-oriented empowerment strategies, leveraging the female's soft power and creating the well-being. So we'd like to ask for your opinions so again. Let me introduce the panelists. First, Mrs. Nia uh, Outlet Interu, Ambassador Extraordinary and uh, Plenty uh, Potentially of the Republic Mali to Japan. And next, I would like to introduce the mayors and the Mitsuko Shibasaki, Mayor of Wapo. And Ms. Kazumi Ota, Mayor of Kashiwa from Chiba Prefecture. And next, Ms. Yoko Kobayashi, Mayor of Kodaira from Tokyo. And next is Tomoko Takizawa, Mayor of Ikeda City from Osaka Prefecture. And last not but least, Uh, Chairman Yuko Ichise, the President of the Japan Chamber of Commerce and Industry Business Women's Club. So we have many powerful leaders to carry out this discussion. And we have multiple themes to cover. The first is about the labor areas, females empowerment comparison both in Japan and overseas. The comparison of the current status You know, according to the World Economic Forum, the gender gap indice. Uh, Japan was ranked as 116 out of 146 countries, and we probably had ranked by, uh, up by four from 120 to 116. However, it is not exactly the improvement because the uh, total number of the countries participating in this survey has been uh, reduced. And we know that we are the last out of those G7 countries. However, to your surprise, in Asian countries, 
after Korea, China, ASEAN countries. Japan is the lowest in this index. This is a very surprising figure. And it is not just surprising. And this is something that we need to feel the crisis. So that recognition, how the mayors and the ambassadors, how do you think about this fact? And what kind of challenges uh, do we have to have in our minds? How do you perceive this? What is your observation about this issue? So first, I would like to ask the mayor Kobayashi from Kodaira city. So in Tokyo, we have the word the ikugyo, it's the child care leave for both men and women. It is a new term, child care work. So it is great that the government is putting this effort. But what we can do as the mayors, or as our kind of a business, Within our office, we'd like to increase the number of the management, the female management, and also we'd like to build a role model. And we need to disseminate that to the local community. Also, as the local government, the gender equality needs to be informed to the community. But decision-making authority, we need to have more female in this area. And it, it's not easy. Because uh, men is for the work and female is for the you know house chores, that is a kind of a unbiased conscious. So this uh, mindset needs to be changed, and I believe education is necessary and grassroots activities will be required, top down as well as bottom up. Those needs to be worked in order to make the awareness change. That's my opinion. Thank you. Shibasaki-san, I would like to ask your observation as well. Same question. What uh, do you think about this issue? As Ms. Kobayashi mentioned, top-down and bottom-up booths are required. So uh, Tokyo has a leadership by Ms. Koike and also has a great coverage by the media. So this uh, child care work has been covered by nationwide media, and not only female, but the male who would like to take a child, child care leave would understand such initiatives has been taking place. And at the Saitama Prefecture last year, the number of male who took the if child care was 50% of the relevant number of people. So not only is a bottom-up basis, but uh, the, we are official workers, but the male workers are also taking the child care leave. We need to appeal this fact, and we need to gradually disseminate this message to the society. Thank you. So I would like to ask Ichise-san, the chairman, in order to expand this uh, effort in the uh, business industry, our uh, business world, I think you are making various efforts, but could you elaborate on that? Yes. By having new system, we need to show the success or outcome. However, this new system needs to be known by the businesses, the companies. We need to disseminate this message. At our Chamber of Commerce, we have about 80,000 companies as members and 515 locations. And in total, we have 1.32 million uh, companies covered all over Japan. And I am also leading the uh, Industry Business Women's Club, and we have the 20,000 female owners. So we have the strengths or network which does not exist in other associations, and we would like to leverage this fact at most, and we would like to uh, create this uh, chain. And at our Chamber of Commerce, SMEs, female empowerment promotion is led, and we have the support from the cabinet office and also uh, Tokyo uh, gov government. And we run the symposium in 
on September uh, 26, women worker, sensible devil, and male and female. So the challenge should be linked to the leap of the business. And we share some use cases and the hint for their activities were shared. The Chamber of Commerce and the Industry Business Women's Club are promoting, further promoting these initiatives. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I have asked your opinions by three panelists, but role model needs to be built, and it is very important to disseminate the message. So I would like to ask you again about being the leader of the female. By having those leaders, female leaders, do you think that your environment is working better because there are female leaders? Well, not yet, not really working yet. The uh, two of you were, you know, shyly raising your hands, but Takigawa-san, how about your opinion? Do you think by having female leader, do you think your city, you know, administration is starting to change? Yes. The expectation by the citizens is what I feel strongly. So we, need, we feel that we've been supported. Thank you. How about Kobayashi-san, the mayor Kobayashi? You shyly raised your hand. Do you see some in the light of the change or sign of the change? As Ikeda-san said, expectation of the citizens is what I feel strongly. However, when it comes to the real outcome, unfortunately, we have not been able to show anything yet. So I would like to ask the same question to other members. Ota-san, I think you had quite a, you know, uh, it was quite impact by having the female leader. But last year I uh, took this office, it's been just one year, so I need to show my outcome going forward. But I have been just, um, after I took this office, actually the, I was the first female mayor of uh, Kashiwa City, so I think the citizens, the community is feeling the change. Thank you. So uh, the Ambassador of Mali, I would like to ask this uh, question. So now the leader uh, is a woman now, so do you think it is a very good opportunity um, for the people to really realize the, the, some changes in the society? What do you think of this? So it is uh, very important that uh, uh, when the mayor become a female, then the uh, other uh, female um, residents probably feel like they have to really participate in the politics. Thank you very much for your insightful comment. And I think we need to have a role model. With a role model, I think that the uh, people be aware of that. So I think it is very important to increase the numbers of the people who are working in the field. Now let's move on to the second theme. So uh, strengths and also the uh, meaning of the uh, empowerment itself. 
So I think uh, we don't have to talk about the uh, significance um, because we really have to use the uh, female workers, yet we have to think of the diversity that every individual really have to shine. And the uh, most critical thing is to use of the female uh, workers and also uh, let the woman shine. It is very critical. But in Japan, we still lag behind. So how do we make use of the strength of a woman and also significance of a promoting the uh, woman's role? So I'm sure that you are doing many things, but the great potential of the woman, uh, how do you think that we can make use of? Uh, maybe I can ask this question to maybe again to the uh, ambassador of Mali. The, uh, to promote the uh, woman's uh, uh, empowerment, empowerment, maybe you can uh, make uh, progress in, in society, economy, and also others. In the country of Mali, what type of uh, activities are you engaged in? Thank you. In Mali, uh, we are taking several uh, measures. Number one, is that the with respect to education that we make a lot of communications um, the education itself is a platform for the uh, agenda equality it is uh, as it is an essence uh, for the people in the past the girl can stay home and work on the uh, house chores and then they used to marry very at a very early age but now we have a law and we prohibited uh, women or girls to getting married earlier than 18 year old. So, uh, so, and also we have created the organization to promote the uh, gender equality. So, women's issue, and also we have created a special agency for women affairs. And uh, other agencies uh, always uh, have a gender advisor. And uh, this gender advisor uh, can uh, really oversee whether the, uh, uh, the balance is taken between men and women in different agencies. And in each government agencies and ministry, they are promoting the agenda equality. And also in the local municipalities, uh, they make sure that the uh, balance between the men and women in the parliamentarian uh, should be also well balanced so that uh, we have a 1325 resolution in the United Nations. This is to protect the women's right, and also this is the equal opportunity for men and women. Uh, African Union has also supported and endorsed this resolution so that the, uh, we are promoting the gender equality. So this is not just for the politics, but also all other uh, aspects of the society. We created the law to promote it. And the second point is about the agriculture. Well, it is true in the industrial sector, but uh, funding with the Agency of Women Affairs can help funding for the businesses. Um, when it comes to securing loans and uh, fundings, that the advisors are women so that uh, uh, gender advisors are all women and then they hear the uh, um, problems from the man, woman because men, um, the women feel uh, a bit awkward to talk to him. So this uh, 1325, resolution 1325, we are currently communicating about the uh, the importance of the resolution 1325. At the local community, local municipalities and regional economies, um, we help them to promote the uh, gender equality. Uh, 
uh, cultural issues, uh, social issues. Uh, due to these issues, that it's very difficult to uh, gain the uh, balanced numbers. But we have to monitor, uh, even in the local municipality, they have to get the uh, well-balanced workforces. Well, thank you very much. It was very interesting. So that uh, may I ask her uh, one more question? Um, it is very critical. So I'd like to ask you this question. Why? Um, how can you check or monitor the uh, these gender equality activities? Um, so, what was the sense of crisis did you have to really promote women's uh, participation? And also, uh, how you had a law and an act to really promote the gender equality. Uh, so, what was the reason? that uh, you could really uh, promote this much gender equality. So that's my question. Thank you for your question. Um, so these conditions, uh, what would be the condition for uh, to have a well-balanced uh, men and women. First of all, at the National uh, Congress, uh, we passed the act of having the 50-50. Uh, but in the parliamentarian regime, there are only 30 percent of women. And uh, as for the uh, the voting uh, list, we have uh, a pledge to have a 50-50 men and women in the voting list. And. Uh, the 30 percent of the parliamentarians are women right now, but uh, the, unless this 30 percent is not uh, preserved, the uh, number in the governmental agencies, if they don't have enough women, then the women can really voice their concern. And uh, in we have an uh, agency of women affairs. In each region, uh, we have uh, uh, we have also organization to promote the gender equality in each region, local region, and also uh, this um, organization is helping the uh, uh, society to promote it. We also um, invite the. Uh, uh, NGOs and also uh, social communities to get involved. So we use the law. First, we endorse the resolution 1325. We pass the law and uh, uh, promoting gender equality at the party level. Uh, uh, since the law has been passed in the Congress, the uh, we made sure that we have to have the female members of the party up to at least 30 percent. So um, as for the electorate list, you have to have the uh, uh, men, women, men, women, uh, the names are in that list. And uh, in the past, uh, as for the, uh, uh, the list of the uh, candidates, that uh, women's names were in the bottom, and the men always came first. But we uh, made sure that the men and women's names are in the alternate, uh, so, and the, now the candidates are half and half. And uh, as for mayors, 20, uh, 30 uh, female mayors are now in our country. But we haven't finished our fight yet. Um, make sure that the girls can uh, go to school and then study. And also, uh, they, we have to avoid that they are getting married at a very young age. Uh, because uh, it's related to a uh, family, uh, because uh, of the uh, family reasons, uh, uh, women or girls have to get married early. So the foundation of uh, families, uh, they have to be mindful uh, of uh, women. Uh, involvement. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, 
for listening uh, and responding uh, to uh, this uh, question, and thank you for the translations. Uh, and uh, also, using the laws uh, is very important because uh, if verbally we're just saying about uh, using women and advancement or empowerment of women, it doesn't work. So it has to be top down and. Uh, um, many countries are doing it, uh, but Japan is behind, even in Asia. So that is uh, the effort uh, needed. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your insight. So uh, to the mayors, I have a question. So first of all, Ota-san, empowerment uh, of uh, women. So creating regions, a contribution of regions, and uh, in Kashiwa City, uh, what kind of efforts are being made? Yes, in promoting empowerment. Uh, it is uh, necessary, but uh, the foundation is not has not laid down yet. Uh, and uh, as um, Kobayasu mentioned, uh, first of all, uh, the e senior executives uh, of a female uh, is necessary. So we have a lot of mayors here today, uh, but still, when it comes to uh, female mayors, uh, it's only about two percent of total. So it's very small, and uh, in local government. Uh, uh, same applies. Okay, so uh, the division heads uh, is now 16% uh, at uh, our city, but uh, when I became the mayor, uh, it was only 4%. Uh, so we have been pushing uh, to raise the percentage, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, I still feel uh, that the uh, number of executives, female executives, uh, is uh, very low. Oh, so uh, more and more uh, female uh, meet workers are uh, involved uh, in decision-making uh, processes, uh, but uh, there's a lot to do. So at uh, Kashiwa, uh, for career development, uh, we have revisited the program to develop female workers uh, and uh, also creating organizations so that uh, we can promote uh, more uh, women uh, in the executive uh, layer because uh, we want them uh, to become executives, uh, but they have to take the test to become executives and pass the test. But uh, very few people are willing to go through that uh, process. So we held a training session. Uh, and I was there as well. Uh, we want to create an environment so that they will be confident uh, and more willing to take the test. And also other initiatives uh, at our city. So this society, there are clear lines between duties. So when it comes to child raising, uh, more and more uh, understanding uh, has been promoted uh, and more male are involved in child rearing. However, when it comes to housework, um, um, men are doing only little work. So uh, women has work uh, outside, they have their own business, raising their kids. Uh, and uh, they have too much work, uh, which it means uh, that uh, uh, we have to do something about it. Uh, so in uh, front of the, st uh, the station, uh, we have created uh, a hub uh, so that uh, we could take uh, children uh, and uh, send them back uh, to their houses. Uh, and uh, also vaccination of flu, uh, we subsidize uh, and uh, subsidize others. Uh, so we listen to a uh, female uh, staff uh, voice uh, so that uh, we can uh, accommodate uh, their um, n needed support. Uh, so we want everyone uh, to be independent uh, and be able to uh, decide uh, on herself or himself, whether to work or not, to get married or not, uh, to give birth or not, uh, so that uh, women uh, can decide uh, on their own uh, so that they will stand out uh, and they will be active. So that is the responsibility of local government. Uh, so I would like to continue to do my best. OK, Ota-san, thank you very much. I'd like to ask Takizawa-san as well. Yes, uh, as Ota-san mentioned, uh, female goes through a lot of uh, life 
changes in life stage, of course, marriage, uh, giving birth, raising kids. Uh, we have a lot. Uh, so when it comes to housework and child raising, it's not something uh, that uh, women uh, only has to do, uh, but still it's lopsided. Uh, so. Uh, with that in mind, uh, in order to solve this situation, uh, we need initiatives uh, in community and uh, initiatives uh, by the local government. These are two wheels of a car. So in Ikeda City, more specifically, uh, with a Chamber of Commerce, uh, we are working with them uh, so that uh, they could find uh, work and uh, also uh, start their business. And when it comes to starting business, uh, I'm sure people will uh, are at a loss uh, what to do. Uh, so specific help about accounting, raising funds, uh, and uh, it's a packaged uh, program of lectures that uh, we e e offer. And uh, in PR uh, video, uh, I appear. And uh, also, we create a co-working space so at a uh, cheap rent, uh, they will be able to find an office. Of course, these locations are also necessary. And uh, we define a term so that uh, they will be able uh, to uh, run their business. And uh, as Kobayasu mentioned, and also Otasa mentioned, uh, within our city and towns, uh, we have to uh, work diligently. So uh, there are uh, public workers, and uh, we also want to uh, increase the ratio of, of female uh, public workers, and uh, we have quota. So it can really be both men and women, uh, but uh, we're not in that situation yet. Uh, we have a long way to go to increase the number of uh, female. So we're taking uh, multiple uh, approaches uh, so that uh, we can promote uh, the changes in people's uh, mindset. Uh, so we all have to uh, take this uh, as our own work ownership. Uh, so it was mentioned uh, only 2% uh, of uh, mayors are female. Uh, so uh, we all are together. We face uh, similar challenges uh, being a wife and a mother. Uh, so I like to communicate uh, about my experiences as well uh, so that uh, we're all equal and uh, no one uh, is uh, peculiar. Yes, uh, listening to your comments uh, so that everyone uh, can change. Uh, I think uh, in that sense, uh, mayors, female ma males, mayors becoming role models, I think, uh, is very important. So now, Ichise-san, I have a question. Uh, so uh, using the power of women, uh, what kind of value can we create? And uh, do you have any uh, specific examples uh, that uh, we can lean on? Yes, thank you very much. When it comes to uh, advancement of women, uh, companies which are very involved uh, in advancement uh, of uh, women, um, this creating an environment uh, so that uh, women can work, uh, this actually means a better uh, working environment uh, for male workers as well. Uh, and uh, this uh, leads uh, to the creation of new value. Uh, so, uh, of course, with yen depreciation and uh, commodity price increase, uh, SMEs are facing a challenge. Uh, however, uh, creating a working environment uh, so that uh, women be can become brilliant, uh, this can become a driver uh, of uh, the business performance. At uh, TCCI last uh, April, uh, we held a, a a consultation uh, meeting uh, about uh, gender equality and also women's empowerment. And throughout this, those uh, companies uh, who are quite active uh, in uh, women's empowerment, I'd like to give you an example. So Seto City IG Prefecture, Ohashi Transport Company, uh, so they are a cargo shipping company uh, and 90% are sub contractors uh, and uh, they uh, have were 
facing an urgent uh, point where they have to shift the vision. Uh, so to create uh, value add uh, services uh, in Asian cities, uh, they started to uh, give additional uh, services uh, such as um, relocation uh, and pre and after uh, relocation uh, work. Uh, and uh, this uh, actually were a very suitable work uh, for female. And they used to subcontract 90%, but now uh, they only subcontract or outsource 10%, uh, and they improved uh, the margin. Uh, so, of course, when it comes to relocation company or a transport company, um, you tend to think uh, that there are a lot of men workers. Uh, however, uh, there are a lot of female workers, and uh, more than half of the executives are female. And not only women, uh, but uh, Asian people, LGBTQ, in addition to foreigners uh, uh, and elderly people are working. Uh, so this company has been growing uh, as a diverse company. Due to time constraints, I can only explain to you one example. Uh, but we've uh, created uh, this uh, booklet. Uh, so I'd like to send it to everyone. So uh, I hope that you can take a look uh, at it uh, when you have a time on hand. Uh, so these can be case studies. Uh, and uh, using this as case studies, I'm sure, uh, will lead uh, to solving uh, your uh, issues. Uh, so. Uh, please, everyone, uh, take a look at it. Uh, so for the remaining sessions, uh, there are 10 minutes. Uh, so future strategy for the next generation led by women. What would be the requirement for that? Uh, and I'd like to ask every one of you uh, to come up uh, with uh, the required element. And I'm sure that you have written it. So if you could show us uh, the flipboard that you have prepared, please. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, let's see. These are the words. And if uh, the photographer can, or the cameraman uh, can uh, follow, uh, as time allows, uh, we would like to ask for your comment. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, to uh, um, Ambassador of Mali to Japan, I think uh, you've uh, written uh, that uh, protection of uh, women's um, right. Can you explain a little bit about this? To protect the female right, we need to first try to protect the right of the female as described in the UN. This also echoes to other countries. There are laws already established in other countries which makes better life for the women. Female needs to be aware of their right. They need to know that they have rights. In Africa, female are not really understanding their right. But the right actually advances the country. So it is very important that female needs to be aware of their right. In Africa, there are not many female women who wants to become the mayor. So I think it is important to observe the protection of the female rights. From a political standpoint, it has to be protected. Thank you very much. It is uh, very important that female needs to be aware of their right in order to solicit for their right. So we need to monitor that the female are included in the kind of a team who can make such decision. And we need to observe whether they are included or not. So Ichisa-san, could you elaborate on your topic? Yes. So regardless of the gender, I think it is important to provide good environment and education. So if we are, uh, oh, I am to talk about female, the granular, uh, you know, or the vision and the female eyesight are very important, how to use the tax. 
if the female had the leadership, I think we'd ha we could have utilized the stocks more effectively. Yes, very much so. Okay, moving on to the next one, uh, Ms. Shibaraki, then the first penguin. I think it is true for me that, uh, as Ms. Kashiwa said, that I'm the first female mayor in Kashiwa City. I don't know whether my uh, performance would be a good one. Uh, not, but I think that we really have to try it so that we can try. I really hope that everyone will actually uh, try the first experience. Have you um, felt that, the uh, yes, that I'm a woman, so people say that the, I can talk to you, and also some female uh, workers say that the, uh, they want to try since there is a female woman. Okay, then uh, Ms. Ota of Kawasa City. It says that the uh, the uh, power or the gut. So when you think of the uh, decision makings, when it comes to the uh, municipality meetings and also local meetings, then mostly uh, members are men. And yet, you have to have some courage and also the uh, gut to be there and uh, speaking with other uh, male uh, counterparts. So that's why I said it's gut. Thank you very much, Ms. Ota. Then that, uh, so sometimes you are actually speaking out, even though other men are not really expecting you to. Well, uh, yes, of course, you have to have a courage to speak up among the all uh, male members. And uh, when I asked the uh, uh, woman that the, uh, why um, not many women are actually uh, making uh, the uh, decision uh, in the uh, public area, but I think that the uh, women have to be more confident and really have to be uh, voicing their views. So it is uh, very difficult to make decisions um, in a very difficult situation, but I hope that uh, women will be also uh, encouraged then and make decisions. So from Kodaira City, uh, Ms. Kobayashi, please. So unconscious bias. You have to be aware that the, there is an unconscious bias. Uh, so this is a man, this is a woman, so that uh, without noticing it, you actually uh, categorize the people into either man or woman. Yet you really have to realize that otherwise you cannot really make a progress. Thank you. So unconscious bias uh, actually made this type of a conference. If there is uh, no unconscious bias, then we don't have to have this type of uh, special meetings. So. Okay, then uh, I hope that uh, female leaders will lead a, a role model and uh, it is going to be taken for granted that uh, individuals are individuals and then there will be a gender equality. So you really have to eliminate the uh, unconscious bias. Ms. Takizawa, what do you think? I think that uh, we have to create the environment so that people can realize their dreams. Um, so you don't have to choose whether you work or you raise children, you can get both. And you can have both so that uh, mentally and also physically you can be healthy. Work-life balance is very important. And that will lead to someone who can realize their dreams. So that's why I said this. Environment is probably the most difficult. Um, psychological safety has been the uh, uh, buzzword recently, and uh, you have to say that this environment, you can say anything, you can do anything, so that uh, probably Takizawa-san, you can be a role model for that too. Okay, thank you. I'll do my best. All right. So that uh, we have been asking about the uh, um, all the question about the uh, future strategy for the next generation by led by women. So uh, 
when you do these things gradually and also steadily and the bright future awaits us. This is not just a good or nice for women, but also it is going to be a kind to everyone in the society and that is going to be the country and also the world. So once again, the uh, uh, economy, politics and, and culture and also economy, there are so many issues that we have to face in Japan. Yet the uh, women's empowered and also they can participate in the different areas so they can really, really unleash their potentials so that uh, their uh, ability can be really uh, reflected in the uh, society. And that will be solving the uh, social problems and other problems in Japan so that the uh, not just the use of the woman, we really have to think of the diversity. You really have to have a great creativity to really make most of the society. So leaders are here on the stage and then we got uh, great insights from them. Hopefully that we can make use of them and any every one of us can contribute to the the affluent and richer society. Okay, then this concludes the uh, subcommittee of the uh, number three future strategy for the next generation led by women. Once again, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you everyone for waiting. We will now announce the declaration. Kanagawa Prefecture, Zamas, Mayor Sato, and Shizuoka Prefecture, Shimada Cities, Someya, Mayor Someya, have already left this uh, meeting because of their official work. So let me read this out. Declaration of the Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors. As members of the Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors, we declare that we shall lead the rollout of the following actions with the aim of creating a society where women shine. One, we shall initiate action to involve women more in decision making in policies, business, and other areas of society. Two, we shall raise awareness throughout society to further stimulate local economies by enabling everyone, regardless of gender, to thrive. Three, as women leaders, we shall apply the knowledge we have built to focus our energy on cultivating the next generation so that anyone can shine as leaders of the future. We shall proactively exchange ideas on new initiatives and share success stories, stories gained through this vision network on women's empowerment. That was a declaration. We will now have a photo session. Could the chief joining us online please pause in front of the camera? And I'd like to ask chiefs on the venue to hold your written declarations towards the camera and look straight ahead. Thank you very much, everybody. So please close your degradations. <laughs> Lastly, Governor of Tokyo, Yuriko Koike, will deliver the closing remark on behalf of the organizers. Over to you. The fourth Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors Conference has been successfully completed with your very active participation. Well, once again, thank you very much.
for uh, participating with us Thank until the very end. Thank you everyone for participating in today's meeting of the Vision Network by female governors and mayors and ambassadors. All of the speeches and discussion in the breakout sessions were worth listening to and powerful encouragement for women's success. Let's continue to share good example, good cases, and supplement each other with our experiences and accelerate the mindset change of society as a whole. The entire society's awareness and behavior will change, and the term woman success itself will no longer be used as a matter of course. I would like to work uh, with everyone towards a future where everyone can shine. As the theme of this year's conference suggests, it is important for female leaders to collaborate with each other and exchange opinions to revitalize local industry from a woman's perspective and leading to sustainable growth in the public and private sector. Especially the promotion of tourism is an important theme and uh, including women's participate, uh, perspective in the discussion is very important. And uh, the governors, only two, myself and also the uh, Yoshimura, but um, in Marunouchi, uh, there was the um, Marche, and uh, it's just a uh, uh, <laughs> walking distance, so I hope that you can uh, visit there and uh, your uh, produce and products are uh, there. We have the uh, Yonezawa beef and also the uh, special hamburger with rice powders. And uh, these are the uh, uh, result of the collaboration between the Tokyo and also uh, Yamagata. I tried it. It's really delicious. And I think that is the uh, great point of the uh, collaboration of the uh, different uh, prefectures. And for the future, um, Tokyo uh, government, government and also Yamagata prefecture, we asked the uh, uh, female um, executives and also uh, local, the uh, female um, business leaders uh, will participate in the uh, special um, project so that uh, we can start the uh, great momentum of the tourism. And also, uh, the uh, Ms. Melba of Mexico said that the, uh, there are 20 ambassadors in Japan and uh, the, we have mayors, female mayors, and uh, Ms. Melba said that she wants to visit um, these different uh, prefectures and, and cities where the uh, female mayors and governors are there so that maybe we can do that so we can work together and uh, really um, create the sustainable society, sustainable world, and the woman's perspective should be really uh, and reflected. Well, it is uh, still the time that we stood talk about the perspective of women and in the future we sh don't have to talk about the women's perspective because it is taken as a matter of fact and also the product and the produce from these different prefectures please uh, try and, and enjoy them uh, through online and also visit the building so this is the end of the fourth vision network by female governors and a mayor's conference we work together in the future it is going to be a matter of fact that there will be a few uh, female Governor. Okay, thank you very much for your participation until the very end of the uh, conference. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed today's conference at this fourth vision network on women's empowerment. Female governors and mayors from across Japan, women ambassadors to Japan, and female business leaders have joined to speak and attend breakout sessions covering five topics. In every part of the program, we have heard important words on empowering women and shared ideas and information on creating a sustainable society and policies to stimulate local economies. Thank you to everyone for taking 
the time to take part in this event. This concludes the fourth Vision Network by Female Governors and Mayors Conference. As we did last year, the local governments joining Bijonet have brought their local specialties for the Bijonet online marche that runs until February 28, 2023. The local specialties from the cities and towns of Japanese uh, women mayors are available for purchase for free shipping. So don't miss this opportunity. For more information, please visit the website. I would also like to ask our audience to respond to a survey. Use the survey button on the official site. We look forward to your feedback. Thank you very much for joining us today.